Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. As long as the enemy has access to your mind, your thought life, and there's no hindrance to that. In other words, unhindered, he can just throw any thought into your mind, and you're just kind of clueless whether it's God, whether it's Satan, whether it's just you. By the way, there's no just you thoughts. Some people don't believe that. But the enemy, he throws fiery darts at you in thought form. But God also has his thoughts. Remember Isaiah 55, he said, your thoughts aren't my thoughts? That's not an excuse to stay that way. <laughs> Some people have said, well, his thoughts and his ways are far above our ways. He just we basically said, we don't understand. God works in mysterious ways. Well, that's not what that scripture is written for. You're supposed to be able to come up and start thinking like God thinks instead of continuing to have stinking thinking. <laughs> as long as the enemy has access to your mind, to your thought life, unhindered, you're going to struggle to walk in what Jesus already purchased when he shed his blood on that cross. Many times the fight of faith is won or lost in the arena of the mind. Which is why Romans chapter 12 is such a valuable verse. Say, thank God for the worm. God for the worm. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. New King James, I have it on the screen. I move quick here if this is your first time. So I do put it on the screen. Jot this down if you're taking notes. All right, how many are hungry for the word tonight? All right, let's, let's look at this. Yeah, you say, well, this one's familiar. I know, but all of my shirts Sunday are familiar. And by the way, if you spend enough time in the word, all of it's familiar. But that don't mean you stay away from it. You don't stay away from it. you got to continue, even in the fundamentals of this. This is a fundamental we're looking at tonight, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you. That's really a stronger word in the Greek than what it shows up there in English. We see beseech. Most people don't use that nowadays. But this is like I urge or I charge you, therefore brethren. Now, wait a minute. Anytime you see brethren... Or beloved in the scripture, who is it written to? Just wave, say me. See, anytime you see brethren, if you're a Christian, you see brethren or beloved, you know this is written directly to me. You've got to understand how to rightly divide the word of God. So when Paul's inspired by the Holy Spirit to write the Roman Christians there in Rome, and he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, he's talking to the Christians. This is after the cross, after the resurrection, after Jesus was raptured, after the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, right? It's after all of that. So rightly dividing this, this applies to you and I just like it does to the Roman Christians. He says, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Wow. Wow. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. See, this isn't getting into the real deep things of the kingdom. This isn't something you're going to get a huge reward for in heaven. This is reasonable service. This is fundamental to your Christian walk. Just a fundamental. What? That you present your body. You can't present your body if you're not there. You got that? Verse 2 of Romans 12, and do not, so this is connected to verse 1, and I believe this is reasonable service just like presenting your body a living sacrifice, what? To not be conformed or squeezed into the ways of the world, but instead be transformed, that means changed, metamorphous, basically is where we get the, the word from the, the Greek word there, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is a renewable source that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Though these are familiar verses, there's powerful revelation in these I don't want you to uh, skip by. First is what I already mentioned, that you have to present your body a living sacrifice. See, people say, and I know some people have to stay home and thank God for for streaming, and we have people that watch all over, really the nation, uh, live here. So I'm glad they're they're doing that because they couldn't get in Amarillo in time to be here tonight for service. 
So that's what these tools are great for in radio the same way. So I'm not picking on people that aren't here, okay? I'm just simply saying this. It's a sacrifice to get yourself ready and to show up at church. Maybe not one time, but let's say here you are, radical as you are, coming on a Wednesday night to a remnant church. We have church again on Sunday. Oh, my. The only day off for some people. You have church on Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Now, most people don't think it's outrageous. Some do in our culture, but we have church every Sunday and Wednesday. And we have a lot of other things you can plug into, such as prayer, tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. if you want to come. That's just your choice. You don't have to. No pressure. But if you want to press into the things of God, it's available, right? But, see, to do that is a living sacrifice. you got to show up and you got to breathe. That's a living sacrifice. Oh, there's been a lot of martyrs that died and their breath was taken and snatched right out of their body by people that were angry at Christ that was in them. But God's looking for some living sacrifices. People that will say, you know, I'm there. Wherever you tell me to go, I'm there. I'm a living sacrifice. So don't miss that. This is reasonable service for a soldier in the army of God. Is that you? Do I need to revert back to children's church again? I'm in the Lord. Well, I, I, well, I'm going to. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I like that. See, these things aren't just songs that are neat that we sing to children. These are marks upon them for life. They're supposed to be to mark their mind. Wait a minute. You're not here to do your own thing. You're here to be a soldier in the army of God. That's why you exist. And your reasonable service as a soldier in the army of God is that you present your body a living sacrifice. You've got to be there. Now, if you're going to have a close relationship with your spouse, and your spouse is worth a wooden nickel, they're going to make sure you're there with them, not always on your phone. I can tell you right now, I've been married 21 years, and still tonight, if my wife says, hey, I want to talk to you for a minute, I'm like, okay, hang on just a minute. I have to return this email. I have to reply to this text. I have to. It's not going to take too much of that just to be like, really? I need you here with me. You've been doing that all day long. A pastor's life, a lot of it is just replying to people. You may not know that, but that's what I pray for people, of course. But that's, I reply to a lot of questions, a lot of different things going on. That's what I do. It's what I do. You're going to run any organization, you're going to have to communicate to the people that are running the organization for you. So communication is a big part of it. But there is a time in my life where it needs to be me and my wife because she's my covenant partner and I don't need to be... Yeah, I'm listening, babe. Yeah. That ain't going to cut it. And for those of you that don't know, haven't tried that yet, don't do that. But the rest of you that have, you should be like, that's right, Pastor. I know I've been there before. (laughs) Hey, if you'll give God your attention, he'll speak to you, even here tonight. Amen. Second thing I want you to look at that's a powerful revelation in these two scriptures right here in Romans 12 is that we can't be fashioned after the world. Instead, we got to be transformed. we got to be changed by renewing our mind. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship illustrated sermons from God's Word and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. There are a lot of Christians that think they can never overcome sin. I guess they think we're all victims. But since we're in Romans, go back to Romans chapter 5 and let me show you a scripture that's just popping off on the inside of my spirit, man. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Say it again. Thank God for the Word. It says here in Romans 5, 17, For if by the one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned through the one. Much more, everybody say much more. Those that receive abundance of grace. Now, pause for one second. You've got to understand grace is not this intangible coverall that people make it sound like. Like they can't wrap their mind around grace, God's so gracious, he's so gracious. Grace is empowerment. It literally means in the Greek, every single word grace but one in the, in the New Testament means this, divine influence on your heart and its reflection in your life. 
That's what it means. You see, people have twisted that to mean something it doesn't mean. But you've got to receive an abundance of divine influence on your heart where it's reflected in your life. In other words, you live different than you used to. See, how people make it, it's just the opposite of what people want to make it sound like. Why? Because they have stinking thinking. And they've been listening to preachers that have stinking thinking. All right, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. I underlined this. Oh, please look at this in Romans 5, 17. Look it up. Make sure it's actually in there. It says, they shall reign in King James. New King James says, you will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Now write this down if you're taking notes. Will reign is a one Greek word that means to rule as a king. <laughs> now maybe you understand Jesus' name, king of kings. He's the king. We're little kings. He's our king. You got that? And the king of kings shows us how we are to live and rule. Now, you're going to go do a study on this, but no matter what, you should know this. It's kind of like basic information to every human being. A, co a king that rules over his kingdom is no victim in that kingdom. He's the king. He's the top. I don't want to say dog, but, I mean, he's the big dog, right? He's, I did say it anyway. He is the one that's in charge. You don't ever think of one of those kings. When I think of those kings, I think of, you know, a Middle Eastern country or whatever, and they show one of those kings. They show that palace. I don't think, oh, what a poor fella he is. Do you? I don't think, oh, poor fella. He's barely making it. No, he's the king. So then why do we as Christians have this scripture sitting up like a daisy right here in the Bible where it says you're supposed to reign in life, rule as a king, and yet we, well, I just can't help but sin every day in thought, word, and deed. What a lie. Kings don't sit here and, well, I'm struggling. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You are the king. I've seen nations that are poor, but you see the king of that nation, he ain't poor. And this ain't about just money. Are you hearing me? In the very next chapter of Romans, it says, that just like Jesus, the king of kings, conquered death in his resurrection, therefore death no longer has dominion over him. In Romans 6, 11, it says, likewise, so just like Jesus, he conquered death, he rose again. Well, just like that, you, everybody say, that's me. that's me. Reckon, that means count yourself to be dead indeed to what? You're dead to it. If you're dead to it, you're still not doing it. You're, you're dead to it. So next time you're tempted to get into sin, you say, no, I'm dead to you, sin. Say that out loud. You're releasing the power of God when you say that. You say, well, I just can't help it. I got needs. See, that shows where your faith is set. On what? No Bible. So it's really not faith. It's actual fear being manifest. If it's not founded in the word, it's fear. If it's in the word, it's faith being released. But I just don't see how I can conquer it. I've been struggling with this for 30 years. <laughs> well, it's, it, God didn't wait on you to you know, see it to make it true. Now, for you, you're going to have to see it for it to be true for you. But the truth is already out there. You can be free from sin. You're supposed to count yourself dead to sin. Amen. Say this with me. I'm dead to sin. Dead to sin. See, instead of repeating that mantra and that cliche... Well, we say in every day in word, thought, and deed. Shut that up right now and say, I am dead to sin. <laughs> That's the power of God. And I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now look at verse 12. It's like he doubles down the Holy Spirit does through Paul right here. He says, therefore, do not let sin reign. There is nothing in that that, sing, that screams victim. Don't let sin reign. In other words, there's a choice here. There's a choice. Sin is always self-will. Holiness is always what God wills. Therefore, Romans 6.12 says... Do not let sin reign. Now look how specific this is. In your mortal body. 
You see, there's coming a day where those that are alive and remain in Christ will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and will forever be with the Lord. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you see Paul tell the church at Corinth, he said, this is a mystery, this is a secret. Not everyone's going to die. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this mortal body will put on what? Immortality. So let me ask you, do you think we'll be sinning in heaven? In your immortal body? No. But notice how specific the Holy Spirit is. Right here, right now, your mortal body, you could die. Now God has said he's promised you long life, so that's what you need to know. But the point is, uh, if this flesh suit is ripped, I, I'm still alive, my spirit is, but I lay this life down, right? That's what ends up happening. There's coming a day where we'll put on immortality. I'm excited about that day. How about you? And it's not going to be some computer. You hear me? It's going to be something the Lord does where his blood's flowing in our veins. Praise God. His glory's flowing in our veins. An immortal body where we can move at the speed of light. <laughs> My wife on the way to church was like, she's driving. Uh, we saw this nice sports car getting in on the interstate. I thought he was just going to take off, and then he, he kind of backed up and everything. I was like, well, I thought he was going to leave us. I guess he's intimidated by our family van. And my wife's got to talk, and she goes, boy, man, that, that car would be fun to drive. I can't wait for the day I get to cruise the galaxies. And I was like, what? What is that? She goes, you know, in the future. They're immortal bodies. I said, oh, yeah. Praise God. You should talk and be excited about our future. It's not hype. Our future's better than anything in our past. Yeah. Immortality's out there. But for now, we're in a mortal body. And so this was so specific that right now, you're not supposed to let sin reign. You all agree that in heaven, we're not going to sin. But you don't have to wait to get to heaven not to sin. You can just go ahead and start reigning and ruling as a king right now so that sin doesn't reign over you. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm talking about how to win the fight of faith. And if you think, well, I can't help but sin every day, then you're not going to walk in victory. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. For sin to continue to be a part of your life as a Christian is a lack of you reigning. That's what it is. Let's just admit what it is. It's a lack of you taking your position of reigning and ruling as a king. So you're not a victim. Say it, I'm not a victim. See, Jesus made it where you're not a victim, you're a victor. A lack of reigning in life is literally a lack of thinking right. That's what this comes down to. Go to verse 13 of Romans chapter 6. You getting anything out of this? He says, and do not present your members. Now that's any part of your body. As instruments of unrighteousness to sin. There are scriptures where members is specifically talking about your reproductive parts. This one is talking about any member of your body. Do not present your members. See, it got real quiet. Like, what? I'm sorry you haven't studied that and found that out. You ought to know how to control your members. Not let them control you. See, people think, I, I can't help it. That's a lie. You can't help it. You're the king. Your finger's not the king. See, somebody, I can't help but flip somebody off. Oh, okay, that's, that's baloney. That, you're not supposed to present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but you're supposed to present yourselves. There it is. See, full circle again. Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. See, this is what's so funny. People that, well, these stupid drivers are out in Emerald. I can't help but flip some of them off. Yeah, but then the praise and worship starts, and you can't even raise a hand. So you can't use that same member to praise God because it's too busy telling you you got to sin with it. All right. Look at verse 14. 
Didn't mean to talk about you. I could tell some people got angry. See, look, hey, I'll never forget walking in the bank to go see Garrett when he worked at the bank. And somebody drove through the parking lot with an Accelerate sticker on the back of their car. And we're flipping another person off. And pastor gets to witness that. I wanted to chase them down and scrape that Accelerate sticker off the back of that car. Because we would never, ever promote any kind of perversion like that. Romans 6.14. This is one you've got to know just like the other ones that we've looked at. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law. It's talking about the law of Moses. But under grace. That doesn't mean there's no laws in the New Testament. Because, by the way, see, when you hear a perverted preacher come and say, well, that's why we don't need the Ten Commandments no more because Romans 6.14. Well, all you got to do is go to Romans 13 and see that nine of the commandments are repeated verbatim to a New Testament Christian. They're repeated to you. Nine in the whole New Testament. You can find nine of them repeated. The New Testament means the new covenant. God knew what he wanted to bring over from the old to the new. I don't know who you think you are to say you're going to set their own terms. There's no way you can set your own terms. You either agree to come under the lordship of Jesus, that's submitting yourself, or you're your own Lord, which means you're going to hell. That does mean that. Now, by the way, I can't find any scripture where if you continue to yield to sin that there's a promise of eternity in heaven for you. I can't find that scripture. I found a lot of preachers that seem to insinuate that, but I can't find a scripture that says that. And I challenge you to look for one that does say that. If you say, well, I believe different. I was taught different. Well, where's that in the Bible? Because see, if it's really going to be biblical, you got to have something called Bible on it. Rightly divided. To have dominion right here, where it says, sin shall not have dominion over you. Dominion and have dominion is one word, and it means to rule. So see, sin shall not rule over you. Glory to God. And see, this is how you renew your mind. You get into scriptures like this and you say, wait a minute. It's an unrenewed thought to think that I have to sin all the time. That is an unrenewed way of thinking. You say, well, pastor, that's the way I've lived my whole life. Well, then change. Change. Get a new way of thinking. You ever heard the scripture, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he? So you're going to have to think different. You're going to have to think right. See, under grace, you're empowered to obey. Glory to God. Verse 15, i got to keep moving. I can't stand how fast time goes on Wednesday night. Give me about 10 more minutes and we'll get out of here, okay? See, when I put a hard sink on it like that, I can can keep my word here. All right, what then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? It's like the Holy Spirit knew that there would be perverts that come and try to twist that. Say, see, you're not under the law. So you're free to sin. That is not what he said. Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. God forbid, King James says. Do you not know? I have discovered this. Everywhere in Scripture where it says, do you not know, there's a whole slew of people that don't know what's about to be said. I'm serious. It's like the enemy takes the clues from the word, see. Satan. Because he says, oh, do you not know? That let him know there's a lot of people that don't know this. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you're that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, don't take that route, or of obedience leading to righteousness? (laughs) It's a choice. There's only two choices, though. There's not four choices. It's multiple choice, but it's only two. Right? Right? But God be thanked, verse 17, Romans 6, that though you were slaves of sin. See, you've got to pay attention to how Scripture's written. Now you're born again, it doesn't say, yeah, you're just a sinner. See, people say, well, Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners. He was talking about before Christ, if you go read that chapter. He wasn't talking about right now. That's stupid thinking, see. Well, if Paul couldn't help us sin, who do you think you are? Then people go and pull out a scripture out of 1 John chapter 1. It's verse 8. They say, he that says he has no sin is a liar. Uh, you got to read that whole chapter. 
He's talking about when you say you're walking with God, but you're living in sin, and you refuse to walk in the light as he's in the light, because if you do that, he says in verse 7 of 1 John 1, that you are then, what, free from all, cleansed is the word, cleansed from all sin. So John was not bipolar. And by the way, neither are you just because some doctor said you were. But he wasn't bipolar. So he didn't say you're cleansed from all sin, but if you say you have no sin, you are a liar. That doesn't even make sense. Either you're cleansed from all sin or you're not. He's talking about people that still refuse to confess their sin and turn from it and say, I'm walking with God and he's good with me living in sin. Folks, that doesn't fly. That dog don't hunt. You ever heard that one? Yeah, I've got a couple dogs like that. They don't hunt. (laughs) Real dogs I'm talking about. But when you're living your life and you have thoughts like that that don't actually work, that's when you're in trouble. So pay attention to this in Romans 6, 17. God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine to which you were delivered. In other words, Doctrine matters. Instruction and preaching that you listen to matters. Yeah. And so when you believe this kind of preaching you're hearing tonight, what verse 18 then applies to you, and having been set free from sin. Somebody say, I'm free. free. Say it, I'm free. I'm free free from sin. sin. You may sit here and say, oh, I sinned today, Pastor. Turn from that. Repent. Repent. Confess, say what God says. Don't play games with it. Turn from it. And then say boldly, I'm set free from sin. That's what you do. I'm set free from it. Now I'm just free to do whatever I want. No. Now look what you became. (laughs) A slave to what? A slave of righteousness. A slave, though we don't like to talk about it, I understand, does what they're told. We're children of God. Children of God are slaves of righteousness. In other words, we don't have the liberty to do whatever we want. Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us, we would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.